Today, we're going to look at some examples of historical apotropaic magic, also known as protective magic. This type of magic has been in use for millennia, and its purpose has always been to provide safety and deflect any danger. We're going to be discussing three forms of apotropaic magic, and then I'm gonna share with you how you can incorporate this form of magic into your own practice. So let's jump into it. Usually apotropaic magic is used in the form of amulets or magical items. The most common form of this that you've likely seen before is the evil eye amulets, which are meant to ward off or prevent any negative energy. These eye amulets were used as far back as ancient Egypt, where the eye of Ra was believed to provide personal protection from any unseen forces. Other amulets shaped like body parts were pretty common throughout the ancient world. The Romans were especially fond of phallic amulets, and they believed that this particular life-giving symbol would ward off any dangers coming from the underworld or the afterlife. Another popular body symbol used for amulets was the hand. Now, hand-shaped amulets have been popular across many different civilizations and time periods. Overall, they acted as a kind of stop sign for any negative forces. These hand amulets could also have multiple meanings depending on the hand gesture featured. For example, the horned hand amulet protected against the evil eye and the fig hand amulet was used in ancient Rome to ward off evil spirits of the dead. Now this one does also have a sexual meaning, which I won't get into, but you can look it up. Another type of apotropaic magic is to draw or tattoo a deity for protective purposes. Nowadays, this is commonly seen in Mexico with the Santa Muerte tattoo. This concept can also be seen within some Yakuza tattoos in Japan where certain animal spirits like the tiger are tattooed in order to provide protection and prevent against bad luck. This tradition of drawing or tattooing deities and spirits actually goes all the way back to ancient Egypt, where some women would draw the Egyptian god Bess onto their thighs before giving birth. This makes sense as Bess is a deity associated with both protection and childbirth. The last type of apotropaic magic we'll be discussing today is protective household items and symbols. Now, one of the most common is the witch's ball, which are often made of colored glass. Now, these started to become popular in the 18th century where they were hung in cottage windows and were believed to ward off any evil spirits from entering the home. Witches' bottles were also popular during this time. They contained protective items such as iron nails, pins, and even urine, and they were usually buried around the perimeter of the home to protect against any malevolent witchcraft. Now, I do find it kind of ironic that making beautiful witches' bottles is such a trend on social media, as witches' bottles are not supposed to be aesthetic or attractive, and their very purpose is actually to deter or prevent witchcraft. Anyway, another similar symbol you might have seen before is a type of witch's mark called a daisy wheel. This symbol was common in early New England and was believed to guard one's home from any malevolent magic or witchcraft. Something else that I think could fit this category is haint blue paint, which I consider to be a type of household protective magic. If you've ever visited Charleston, Savannah, or New Orleans, you may have noticed that the porch roofs are often painted a particular shade of blue. This color is called haint blue, and it's meant to prevent any ghosts or negative spirits from passing through the threshold of the home. I discuss this in more detail in my home tour where I show you my own haint blue porch ceiling. Now, there are a variety of ways you can incorporate these historic forms of protection magic mentioned in this video into your own practice. You could carve one of these amulet shapes into wood and wear it as a talisman, or you can simply just buy a necklace with one of these ancient protective symbols. As for DD apotropaic magic, I don't necessarily recommend getting a tattoo, but you could draw a protective deity or symbol onto your skin for any particular magical working that you might want a bit of extra protection for. And as for your home, you can try making a protective object such as a witch's ball or a daisy wheel to bring in some of that protective energy into your space. 
I also go over more types of household protection magic in a recent Pagan Happy Hour video, which I'll link down below. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. If you made it to the end, please comment a witch emoji. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.